Shalom. I want to give a praise and a glory to Yahweh, Hashem, 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 Rokah, Kadash, and double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Mill Summit on this truth, and peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. And yeah, man, um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna play this video and get some scriptures, man. You know how it is. While you enjoy tonight's show, I want you to think about something. The spot where you're sitting, every square foot of ground in this country was stolen from my ancestors. And after you stole it, you murdered them. So you'll forgive us if we do not laugh along. There is nothing funny about the extermination of a people. The theater stinks of blood. That's all I have to say. Yeah, man. Yeah. You even might just laughing like they say it's, a, it's some joke. And what I gotta say to Elam is this, man. It, it, it's, it's funny now. But when when our deliverer comes, you have a share. <clears throat> You won't be afraid, man. Jeremiah 49 and 22. It says, Behold, it shall come up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Basra, and Basra being the places where Edomites dwell. And it says, And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. So, yeah, man, they're going to be a crying, literally shaking. Some men may even die of a heart attack because it's too much of what they're seeing. <clears throat> and yeah, man, the Lord's going to be executing judgment upon these Edomites, man. <clears throat> and let me go to um, Isaiah 66 and 15, because the Lord's coming back with the chariots, man. <laughs> and you know what? Before I get this, let me just basically get um, Psalm 68. Psalms 68. And 17, man. Because the Lord's coming with, with a host of angels. And this basically adds on to what I was saying, man. Because, yeah, man. The, the host of angels that is coming with is, is literally an, an army. And that's what host means. It's coming back with an army of angels to fight. And it says the chariots of God are 20,000 even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, being Yahweh As in Sinai, in the holy place. So the Lord is going to be among the holy angels when when they when it comes back man and they're going to execute judgment like it makes mention in um jude 1 and 14 it says and enoch also the son from adam prophesied a dc and behold the lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all the ungodly among them of all the ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all the hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him these are murmurous complainers walking after their own lusts and their mouths speaking with great swelling words, having immense persons in admiration because of advantage. So yeah, man, when the Lord comes back, it's coming back to, to judge, man, and make war. As it makes mention in Revelation 19 and 11, it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness, he do have judge and make war. So you see, and you know, you can even go down to verse 14, man. And it says, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So you see. <clears throat> and now let me go to Isaiah 66. 66 and 15. And it says, For behold, the Lord Yahweh by Shem HaShah will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by sword will the Lord Yahweh by Shem HaShah play with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. So you see, and that's going in, and, and that means Esau Edom too, man. Esau Edom, you're going to get slaughtered. <clears throat> and what was it again, um, Blood. Yeah, Numbers 35 and 33 it says, So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, 
for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So yeah, man, Esau's blood has to be shed too, and that's exactly what's going to happen, man. <clears throat> Yeah, let me start. Isaiah 34 and 5, it says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven, going into those intercontinental blessed missiles. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia, upon these Edomites, these Caucasians. You see, I'm, you saw them laughing in the video, turning red. <laughs> and it says, um, And upon the people of my curse, the judgment, the sword of the Lord is filled with blood, is made fat with fatness, and with the blood of lambs and goats, and with the fat of kidneys of rams. For the Lord, Yahweh Hashem, shall have a sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumia. So you see, they're going to be slaughtered, their blood is going to be shed, <clears throat> and they're going to be cut off soon, man. Literally, after they served the, the thousand years of hardcore slavery in the kingdom, they can kiss their asses goodbye. We don't need them. <clears throat> and I think it's um Isaiah. Is it sixty three? Isaiah sixty three. Yeah, Isaiah sixty three and one. It says, "Who is this that cometh from Edom, with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, travelling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save." And that's how was trying, man. He's coming back to save his elects, man. To save his people. Hence why he's known as a deliverer, man. And like he makes mention as well. Out of Zion. <clears throat> we have Romans 11 and 26. It says, and so... And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written. There shall come out of Zion and the deliverer, being Yahweh and shall turn away on godliness from Jacob. And he's going to deliver us, man. I want to say, us, you know what? No, let me not even say that. He's going to deliver his elect, because I don't know if I'm part of the elect. I don't know. That's why I had to rephrase. And it says, um, verse 2, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? And thy garments like him that treadeth in the vine fat. Basically going into grapes being stamped on to create um, wine. Or you could say wine juice. <clears throat> and it says, I have trodden the wine press alone. And of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my raiment. And this is basically symbolic for the bloodshed that the Lord is going to do, man. And it says, for the day of vengeance in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Yeah, because the Yahweh is going to come back and redeem the, the elects, man. <clears throat> this is going to, he's going to save them. And let me go to... <coughs> Let me go to Ezekiel 35. You know, let me start with verse 1. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it, <clears throat> literally being the Edomites, and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. <laughs> and remember <clears throat> what the guy was saying. He was saying, um, that um, the land that they're on is is stolen, and how it it smells like blood, cause that's what these Edomites did, man. That's exactly what they did. They, they shed the, the blood of um of 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 the ten tribes, man, and the ones that were, that were left, they were taken into captivity. <laughs> And it says, And I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, Yehowah, Shai, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. 
And that and that just reminds me of um Revelation thirteen and ten man. Let's see what that says, Revelation thirteen and ten. And it says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patience and the faith of the saints. And literally <clears throat> the saints are going to get the revenge, man, by taking the their nobles and the kings into bondage, man. And then, then they gonna they're gonna have to serve slavery, man, or bondage. <clears throat> and yeah, the reason why it talks about the patience because for example, like right now, man, like the elders and the apostles, they've they've been laboring, they've been patient, waiting for Yahweh Shai, man, and waiting for um that that vengeance, because like Yahweh Shai made mention, man, is is coming back for vengeance, and also to re redeem um his elects, man, or basically deliver them. And like he makes mention in um Psalms. Psalms 149 5, it says, Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with furs of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. This honour have all his saints. Praise you, the Lord. So yeah, man, that's what, that's what the saints have to be patient, man, and have faith because they're going to be doing this, man. The Lord is going to recompense these human for what they've done. <clears throat> you know, Jeremiah 17 and 40 says, And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knewest not. For you have kindled a fire, fire in my anger, which shall burn forever, going to a long period of time. But as, you, but as um, I just read, it says, even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. So that's including Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And the prophets are also a part of the saints, man. The saints are the children of Israel. And that's why they have to be patient and also have faith, man. Because they're going to be executing those judgments upon the heathen. <clears throat> Even... The children of Israel. Psalms 148 and 14. He says, He also have exalted the horn of his people, and that horn going into power. He says, The praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise you, the Lord, you help us, him, how sure, man. And, um, yeah, man, even when he makes mention of, um, even of the children of Israel, there's a difference between Israelites. They also they say there's an order. You got the one third and then you got the two thirds. The one third being the chosen of the chosen and the two thirds being the chosen. So although all Israel all Israel or should I say the top all of the twelve tribes of Israel are of the elect. The, the, they're the chosen ones. They're the chosen nation. There's also a chosen among among the Israelites. That's why I had to make mention even of the children of Israel. Because you, you can't forget about the two-thirds. Even though they're wicked now. And they're going to be cut off. They're still going to come back. And be of that election, man. Of that chosen nation. Which are, which is the Israelites, man. Like it's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy. Let me get this peculiar people. Deuteronomy 14 and 2. It says, For thou and holy people unto the Lord thy power. Or shall I say, Yahweh thy power and... The, the Lord Yahweh have chosen thee to be a peculiar people, meaning special, unto himself, above all nations that are upon the face of the earth. And that's even including the two thirds too, man. They're part of that number. Or should I say they're or should I say they're part of the the nation that's been chosen. Even though they're going to be destroyed on this side. But um yeah, let me go back to Ezekiel 35 and 
You know, let me just start at verse 5. It says, Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Say, if thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. And remember what he said in the book, in the book of Numbers. Numbers 35 and 33 says, so, so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So there you go, man. The land's going to be cleansed by Esau basically getting slaughtered, man. And it says, um, Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it him that passeth out, and him that returneth. And another thing, <laughs> another thing to like to say, man. Like I mean, it's mentioned in um, Malachi 1 and 4, it talks about them returning and building the desolate places after the Lord's them, after the Lord brought it down. And another saying they like to say is build back better. But the thing, the thing with um with that is, this time they're not going to build back better. This time they're going into captivity. So after America has been destroyed. <clears throat> These Edomites are going into captivity, man. And so are these other heathen, the other nations who aren't Israelites. And it says, And I will fill his mountains with his slain men in thine hills and in thy valleys, and in all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy city shall not return. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh, Bashim, Shai, because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine and we will possess it whereas the Lord Yahweh was there. And yeah, man, if you go on to that word possess, it means to, to great, man, to force. And that's exactly what Esau wants to do. He wants us to be his. And um, like I may mention, the, the Israelites are known as a delicate, calmly woman to Yahweh. So we're basically the Lord's woman. And <laughs> literally... We know with women, men like to basically grape women. So if you look at it like that, literally Esau's trying to, trying to grape the Lord's woman, which is the Israelites or the 12 tribes of Israel. And it says, Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, Yehawah, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy, which thou hast used out of thy hatred against them. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, how about Shem, how shy? And that I have heard all thy blasphemies, which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying, They are laid desolate, they are given us to consume. And yeah, like, like it makes mention in um, Isaiah 47. 47, I think it's 6. Yeah, it says, I was rough on my people, I have polluted my inheritance, and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancients, hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke. So you see, so but when the Israelites got put into captivity, man, the, the, we were given to our enemies. <clears throat> and let's see what the Lord has to say about that. Isaiah 35 and... 13 it says thus with your mouth you have boasted against me and have multiplied your words against me i have heard them thus saith the lord yahweh somehow shy when the whole earth rejoices i will make thee desolate as thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of israel because it was desolate so will i do unto thee thou shalt be desolate O mount seir and all i do mere even all of it and they shall know that i am the lord yahweh somehow <clears throat> shy and then go over to obadiah 1 and 18. Here we go, here we go, here we go. It says, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them, and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord Yahweh have spoken it. So there you go, man. None remaining. And like it makes mention in the book of Job, um, I 
um, Job 20 and 5, it says that, that the triumphant of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. And yeah, literally, we, we know Esau's a hypocrite and we know Esau's the wicked. And literally, their rulership is nothing, man. Here it is, we're thinking, oh, Esau's rulership, it, it, it's lasted for so long. It hasn't. You gotta remember 1,000 years is one day to the Lord. Esau has hardly been in power, man. It may seem like that down here, but up, up in the heavens, man. Esau hasn't been in power that long. And even if you compare it to the kingdom of the 12 tribes of Israel, man, or the Lord's kingdom, that's going to be forever. Imagine forever compared to these heathens' rulership combined. It's, it's going to mean nothing. And that's soon approaching, man. And it says, though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? He shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Yea, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. And it says, the eyes also which saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place any more behold them. <clears throat> So you see, there's literally going to be no, <laughs> there's going to be nothing of Esau left, man. It's all going to be destroyed. And the only way to find out about Esau is going to the museum and literally reading the books. And um, we know the kingdom is going to be advanced. You could probably even watch the history, man, of what these Edomites were doing. <clears throat> because... I am gonna lie, man. I've seen the chariots project things, man. And when I say project things, I mean literally pour this light together to create an image. And at one time, actually not even one time, it was multiple times, man. I've seen them projecting um, images of the saints. Literally, um, it was someone who had a palm in their hand, and he had a dark dark skin. His he had a he had like woolly hair. It was it was white, pure white, and his beard was pure white. And he had the robe down to the foot, and you could see the hands and his feet. And literally, the the, the hands and feet were were dark in complexion, and the robe was pure white. The hair was white. The beard was white. <laughs> and I, I I've seen many chariots, um. Basically, project that man, that 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 image of of, of the saints or of, of an angel. Like I, I, it, it may be how a shy they were projecting, but we know there's loads of angels up there. So I'm not gonna make any assumptions and be like, oh yeah, it was how shy that I was seen. So I'm gonna just leave it to um, it was one of, it was one of the saints. <laughs> But um, yeah, man. Oh, this um video was edifying. I want to give a praise and a glory to Howbush and Howshai and Shalom, man.